in a place called Kishin County, Kentucky, located between a village called Kelly and the small town of Hopkinsville. There is a farm that in the 50s of the last century turned into a place where strange and terrible events played out. This event was widely publicized and became one of the most famous cases of human encounters with alien beings or guests from another dimension. To date, this case still remains one of the biggest mysteries of modern ufology. Most of the witnesses of those events have already left this world, but the memory of the case with the goblins continues to live and excites the minds of the living people no less than then. It happened on August 14, 1955. A woman told the local press in Dogtown, Indiana, that while boating with her friends along the shore of the Ohio River, they had seen a shiny object in the sky, and that later that day, a hairy, clawed hand came out of the water and tried to drag one of them into the water. The friends managed to fight back, but they did not see what the creature was. Exactly one week later, an even stranger story was told by members of a family living on a farm in Hopkinsville. Billy Ray Taylor was a guest on the Sutton farm and was getting water from the well when he noticed, in his own words, a bright object falling from the sky. It landed in a neighboring field. His testimony was only one of many among the people living in the neighborhood who observed strange lights in the sky that night. Upon returning to the Sutton's home and recounting what he had seen, Billy Ray's friend, Lucky Sutton, simply ridiculed him. At 8 p.m., the dog in the yard began barking incessantly. Billy Ray and Lucky went to find out what was wrong. They soon returned to the house terrified and told the rest of the family to hide and stay out. Then, within hours, the family was terrorized by small creatures with pointed ears, clawed hands, large round eyes with silver skin or some kind of silver equipment. They appeared from the direction of a nearby field. All these hours they had been climbing the walls of the house, clinging and hanging from the roof, peering into the windows of the house and looking through the windows at the people who were scared to death. The family would not put up with the presence of the strange creatures, and the men decided to confront them. Taylor fired multiple shots through the window with a shotgun. When he looked outside, a clawed hand grabbed him by the head from above. Despite the fact that he had claimed to have shot them many times, the creatures were completely unharmed, as if the bullets had no effect on them. The hits only sent them flying back into the yard. The people in the house could not calculate how many of the creatures actually surrounded the house. Many or just two or three, because they moved very fast and probably disappeared into thin air and then reappeared a few meters away from where they disappeared. With the creatures gone, the family, in their entirety, traveled in two cars to the nearest police station. The sheriff and a team of local law enforcement officers went to the farmhouse. No signs of alcohol or drug use were found at the scene, and they also found several shotgun shells and shell casings shot outside. Local media also showed up at the farm, and the residents of the farm said they would not enter the house until investigators finished their inspection. Then they claimed that after the media and police left, the goblins reappeared, and like the previous night, frightened them, disappearing only before sunrise. Skeptics have always claimed that this story is the most common hoax and fiction, but the numerous eyewitnesses to those events had no motive whatsoever to make up such a convoluted story. It is known that Taylor and members of the Sutton family made very few public appearances and gave very few interviews after the events. The Suttons soon sold their farm and disappeared into obscurity. The local police investigation was puzzled by the fact how colorfully everyone involved described the events and how similar their testimonies were in describing their feelings of fear and anxiety on the night they were attacked by the goblin-like creatures. There was also speculation that the Sutton family had been attacked by some unknown species of monkey. However, police found no sign of monkeys at the scene nor were any monkeys seen on the farm property during the entire police investigation. So what happened in Hopkinsville in 1955? Were the Sutton family and their guests really terrorized by creatures from another world or by an unknown species of animal yet to be discovered by modern science? Or was it an ordinary hoax set up for completely unknown reasons? 
Most of the eyewitnesses are now dead and will not be able to shed any light on this story. It has now become just another legend. Will we ever be able to find out who or what almost a dozen people saw in 1955? It's unlikely.